Warsaw Liberia uncovers and showcases the best of Liberia and shows the world the truth about Liberia. We educate, elevate, and promote all things Liberia. We conduct interviews, panel discussions, debates, and more. Tune in to Focus on Liberia on Facebook and YouTube and be a part of the stories that make up the news. This is Focus on Liberia, and I am Dennis Jack. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to yet another edition of Top Talking Thursday on Focus on Liberia. My name is Dennis Jai, and we are broadcasting from Atlanta, Georgia. Last week, we were discussing the vision of presidential aspirant Alexander Benedict Cummings. Tonight, we're going to be delving into the vision of presidential aspirant Joseph Numa Boakai. Mr. Boakai has his plan arrest. We're going to be delving into that very quickly. I want to welcome all our viewers from across the globe. This is Focus on Liberia, where we educate, we elevate, and promote all things Liberia. Joining me to discuss the vision of Joseph Newman Buakai, I have two members of the TAC, JNB TAC team, starting with Mr. Larama Yontong, who is joining me from the city of Brotherly Love. Mr. Yontong, welcome to Focus on Liberia. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you. It's um, it's always a pleasure being here. I think I am a familiar face now, but now on focus on Liberia. But every time we have to um, commit our time to forming part of the national conversation on the progress of Liberia, we are more than honored. So um, I want to say thank you and good evening to all your listeners out there. Thank you, Mr. Yonton. Let me welcome Mr. Josh Kanet Tule, who is also the man behind the scene, a strategist on the JMB tag team. He's here to discuss arrest. That's JMB's vision for Liberia. Mr. Tule, welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks, Dennis. Uh, it's nice being on the show again. Nice, uh, even though I'm tired, my eyes can hardly stay open, but I'm I'm happy to be here. Thank you so much, Mr. Tulit. Let me welcome our political analyst, Mr. Mohammed Sharif. Mr. Sharif, welcome to Focus on Liberia. Dennis, it's uh, good to be here. Thank you. And as you also mentioned that Mr. Sharif is a proud product <laughs> of Waplo Institute in Kilipo, Kanwekan River G. <laughs> Mr. Sharif, we are glad to have you. Uh, thank you for adding that, Dennis. People keep wondering about Waplo. Where's Waplo? But we're going to keep that for another day. Let me welcome our public policy analyst and also the presenter on the Liberia History Channel, Carl Famule. Carl, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's always my pleasure. It's been a while of a tough talking Thursday tonight. We are here to talk tough. Very tough. <laughs> All right. I want to start the show by uh, welcoming members of the JMB tag team to talk to us about arrest. That's the JMB vision for Liberia. Uh, arrest, the acronym, arrest for agriculture, rules, education, sanitation, and tourism. Let me start with Mr. Yonto on the tag team to tell us about JMB vision for the country. And you have three minutes. Sir. Well, um, Harris is an acronym. Um, it stands for agriculture, roads, education, sanitation, and, and tourism. Um, for us, this is a national vision that we believe will move Liberia to its next era of, of prosperity. We believe that these are cardinal pillars upon which we can we can build upon the vision of our country. Um, we all have seen the last five years and how the country continues to go backward as opposed to moving forward. And so as much as we understand the dynamic nature of our contemporary politics, but we also are in tune with the history and understanding that Liberia has a longstanding complex history in terms of national urgency. We thought that as a way of revitalizing our economy and getting our people to work, um, we tackled 
some of the major issues that can bring um, not just short-term solution, but a long-term um, solution for our people. Take, for example, in the area of agriculture, um, a lot of time you realize that you have people giving political speeches when it comes to actually addressing the problems of agriculture. And once they are elected, uh, it stops there. Um, but Mr. Boaga has a long-standing history. Um, it's such as maritime, as I will call it, as it relates to agriculture. Um, and he wants to use this sector um, that contributes to about 60% of the livelihood of our population to drive our people into prosperity by creating jobs, um, moving our economy that is largely based on the service industry to an agro-based kind of agricultural economy that helps our people um, to be self-sufficient. We see how um, the last budget, I know the, the, the draft budget has al al already been submitted, but the 2021, 2022 budget, we saw how the government could not even sustain his own program by including 11 um, million into the budget for subsidizing the rice. We thought that that is an ill-advised policy. It's not sustainable and a sustainable effort towards agriculture will witness more of an empirical um, approach in terms of how we deal with our people. We cannot continue to have um, an input-based economy in which we are importing our stable food as opposed to um, subsidizing farmers in different at different levels of the agricultural sector to ensure that they are able to, to produce our stable food. We also talk about education, which will go um, in more details. Um, the question of education is tied to the economy because you want to ensure that companies um, that are driving the means of production um, and ensuring supply chain, supply and demand chain within the, within the private sector are adequately absorbing what um, our institutions of learning are putting out there. And so you want to make sure that um, we invest in education as it stands um, in the last budget, um, we saw that the government overall national spending on education was just around 13.8% of our national budget. Uh, one part in comparison with our uh, GDP is around 2%. So we're not even mashing up um, to the regional com competitiveness within our region in terms of investing in education. Um, we are a nation that also signed the Sustainable Development Goals, uh, co-fold of the SDG, clearly, um, put pressure and responsibilities on national governments to, to ensure that they create an environment for equitable um, and quality education. And the investment treasury at a global level is around 20% of your national um, budget, as well as 4% of your GDP. So we're far lacking in that. And I know we have more time to talk about some right. of the challenges and programs of education. But I will stop. I will stop at agriculture and education and see if George could, you know, handle the other two, and then we'll take it from there. Thank you. Let, let me welcome Mr. George Kanatuli. And George, I also want you to uh, mention, you know, how in your delivery, how the plan came about and why those areas were picked. Go ahead, sir. You, you're muted. Please unmute. The reality here is that every, every government, especially in a country that is basically impoverished, like ours, there are too many things that will call that calls for the attention of any government in power. And you have very little resources. You have too many needs chasing very little resources. So you have to prioritize. Um, and then from there, as you go on, you can scale. You can improve, increase the scale. And, and, and attach importance and attention to many other sectors. Um, one of the, the key factors here is uh, 
Joseph Bokai has been in government for a very long time. Whether working in government or working as a consultant to governments, uh, he has seen over the over 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 his long years of experience in life that there are areas in Liberia that are key to transformation, that are key to birthing what I would consider the Liberian Renaissance. And like I said, you cannot do everything. Uh, education is very paramount. Uh, roads, which is basically infrastructure, we call it roads, but it's not only limited to roads. It's not only limited to agriculture. Uh, sanitation also have the healthcare component within it, and then tourism. Uh, and without sanitation, you can't have tourism. And sanitation is not only just about cleaning your environment uh, from a from a, a tangible perspective, where you from an aesthetic perspective, where you clean the trash from it, but it's also about cleaning how your your conducts are, how your governmental processes are. So we look into it from a very uh, in-depth perspective, but I will go back to, since he covered agriculture and uh, education, I will go back to roads. Jesus Baga said something that brought about some brahaha. People started saying, oh, how are you going to do these things? It's not possible, whatever. He talked about within the first year, uh, there will be free movement of traffic on our major roads across the country because over the years we know, and it happens year in, year out, there are places on our untarred roads which are very, very important because these roads are feeder roads. These roads are uh, uh, places people used to travel, or, or routes people used to traverse to go to major population centers and centers of influence in the country. These roads get bogged down during the summer, I mean, during the, the rainy season. And there are known spots because the soil is clay like it retains the water. And normally it has overhanging uh, uh, vegetation. So as a result, the sunlight cannot really penetrate most of the day to dry the area. So as trucks pass and cars pass, they turn the mud up and it becomes a slug fest. And what happens sometimes in certain places, there's sabotage going on. The locals in areas will come in the night and make sure they dig the place up so that more cars can, can get stuck so they can have a, an economy. Because when cars get stuck, the people will pay them to help them push the car in. The, and then they, they, so they don't go anywhere. They just stay there and help push cars and collect and collect fees. But anyway, the reason why he said this is because it's, it's, not, it's not something that is, is difficult to perceive how it can be resolved. Uh, before Joseph, but when Joseph Burger was in government under the Doe regime, they started doing the Turbo regime. Turbo had the feeder road project. And the feeder road project, one of the things that it did was that major uh, centers of administration across the country had uh, had uh, earth, uh, road working equipment, uh, bulldozers, yeah, yeah. compactors, water tanks, and these things there, uh, including excavators and all. And they were used to keep the country open, even during the rainy season. People went from place to place. If there was any boggy area, they would come and do the repair quickly. So what we want to do, we're not going to create anything brand new. We're just going to use what has worked for Liberia and contextualize it to our current context and use it to move and drive the economy. Because agriculture will not go anywhere without good roads, trust me. Product, produce with, 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 with Things will be produced up in the hinterlands and they will all spoil on the bad roads. So we need these things as uh, economic drivers. We need good roads. And then once you create local you know hubs of engineering where you have all these things place they can keep these on tired roads open throughout the year facilitating movement making Monrovia a little bit more attractive it's dirty is is there's too much heat and the cost of living is high people will want to come but sometimes people wonder if you go to Vonjama for instance sometimes most of the year you can't easily get to Monrovia it takes you days to traverse 224 kilometers. It takes you days just to be able to leave from Vonjama to, to Banga, which is not, you know, something that people find very, very uh, admirable or they, they, they enjoy. So, I mean, roads are so essential. Before we can pay, before we can pay all the roads, we will follow the blueprint already used by the Ellen Johnson, already laid down by the Ellen Salif government and the and those ones are followed by George. We are God. We will build upon it. We will 
pave roads, we'll, we'll follow through and complete what is there, but we'll also make sure that the roads that are not earmarked for paving are pliable throughout the year. So Thank then you. we talk about sanitation quickly. I don't let me see something. My eyes are okay. No, I'm just I'm, you asked me. This is what we want to do. We Thank also want to also make sure that Liberia is clean because if the country remains dirty, you have high incidence of waterborne diseases, high incidence of different sicknesses and stuff. So one of the things we want to do is sanitation, sanitation, sanitation. Get the Liberian people involved. Let me say this to you. From time immemorial to now, governments past, including the one that is present, have never seen themselves as partners of the people, to work with the people, to, to, to encourage the people to work with them. No, they are always seeing the people as the governed. And the government has been mostly for... Five minutes gone. Okay. Um, the government has been mostly for those who are in the government. So we want to change that. We want to get the people to help to keep the city, the nation clean. And the last Thank one, you. tourism. Thank you, Mr. Tula. We'll, we'll tourism, come back to you. Happen. Okay, go ahead. We'll come back to you. Before I bring in uh, my um, analyst tonight, let me ask you both one question. That is, uh, is the, the, the vision, so the finished product, Okay, somebody told me, say your vision is, you start from your vision and walk backwards. So when we look at sanitation, we look at health, uh, not health, sanitation, roads, mm -hmm. agriculture. What specifically does Joseph Newman Boaka want to see at the end when it comes to sanitation, when it comes to health, when it comes to road, when it comes to tourism and uh, all the, the factors in arrest? What specifically is he aiming at? Let's say sanitation. What would be a target goal that this is what I want for Labro when it comes to sanitation, when it comes to education, when it comes to these areas that have been listed? Quickly. Just use one minute. So my All right. Okay, let me go quickly. Let me let's look at something. For instance, we're not changing Moon River. We have one capital city. We don't have the money to go and build a new capital city anywhere, right? Now. right. So we got to keep Moon River clean. How do we do it? The first thing is so is is a daunting prospect when you look at it. You have a huge population gap uh, population uh, using the Montserrado River as the latrine. So, sorry, Mr. 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 Kane, I, I don't want to. The how may be too long. I just want to see what really he wants to see at the end of the day when it comes to first thing is put in place. Not only the structures, but the legislation, the city ordinances, it comes with sensitization. It comes with carrying the people along. If you don't carry the people along, there's no way you can accomplish it. But when you when you sensitize the people, you work with the kids, you work at every level in the community, you will see that the national attitude towards cleanliness will change. It will help. It will help because we need to get it. We need to get the country clean. So one of the things that we want to do, you ask a question and I'm answering you honestly. It is not, there is no one pink brush for this. It's work. To keep Liberia clean is not just kept cutting trash away from the major points. It's, it's changing the attitudes of the people towards cleanliness. It, it comes with a lot of things. Hey, let me tell you something uh, uh, quickly. If you do not deal with the issue of the drug, uh, the kids that are being, the wayward kids right now that are being victims of drug, drug abuse, you cannot put drums outside. You cannot put things outside to collect trash. They will take it and sell it. They will take it and sell it. So it's a holistic perspective. You have to attack Liberia from a completely holistic view. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Uh, so, Mr. So that is, yeah. So overall, um, ours as a vision um, is that vehicle that we believe is going to lead Liberia um, from this state of Barar State, um, a fragile nation that is threatened by so many level of um, complexity to a state of prosperity. Now, these specific pillows are the primary targets, right. but um, as the presidency evolves, you know, there are things that come through the windows. Hmm. Agriculture specifically, our current national 
productivity output as it relates to agriculture is very low. It's not that people are not farming. People are doing house, household small farming, small scale farming um, across various levels. Let me interrupt you a little bit. So for agriculture, what Mr. Boaka want to see at the end, say for instance, that- That's what, that's what, that's what, that's what, that's what we're outlining. One every month. That's what we're or, outlining. Yeah, so I want to see specific- we want to see in order to in order to in order to state what you want to see, you have to you have to outline the problem. The problem is ah, that he just wants us to jump. Level, he just wants us to jump and give you straight answer. Yeah, at, at the level of where we are as a discussion. nation, yes, I did. <laughs> we 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 do have people that are engaged in farming, but our national productivity level is low. As a government, we would like to see that increased. Right. Well, How do we do that? that? Mean, yeah. How do we do that? Is a conversation that we're open to, but the the entire sector is challenged by a number of things, right? Like um, George mentioned, we don't have farm to market rules. Mm. We have to use the um, subsidiary pedal within um, ours our rules to ensure that we can do that. Because when right. we do that, we will already. But that address the problem of you know storage right. capacity. And, and by rules, you mean at the end of the day, you want to see the Ganta happen four lanes from Cape Mount to Cape Palmas. Is that what road means? We will increase. We 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 will extend. We will extend um, existing roads connectivity. Right. Mm -hmm. um, we want to see farm to market roads. We want to we want to we want to make sure that take for example the road from from Lofa County is paved. So as far as Monrovia, so the farmers, as far as in Lofa County, the county that you once used to be the breadbasket of Liberia, can have easy access, you know, to Monrovia to be able to sell that produce, right? So that's one of the areas. Mr. Barker has said in terms that he's looking to ensuring that we can establish on his region, the agricultural bank. That will increase the level of involvement of Liberian farmers to small cooperatives having access to finance, which is a major problem um, at the moment for most farmers. And even people that are participating at different levels of the agricultural sector, they are challenged. Take for example, palm oil. Palm oil we recently started to process and develop um, the palm oil industry, right? And exporting it um, at, a, at a larger scale. But when you have companies like Equatorial palm oil, like Golden, Golden Verodon, in massive competition with smallholders, it becomes a problem. So how do we move these smallholders to a point of competitiveness? The agricultural bank comes in to subsidize the effort. All right. Mm -hmm. So at the agricultural front, that is what we're looking to do. When it comes to education, our main goal is to make Liberians' uh, students more competitive. Okay. When Mr. Boycott appeared on one of the local radio stations, he said that even people who are, and that is true, even people who are graduated from colleges and universities today, they are far less competitive. One pair in comparison with their counterparts you know, within the region. How can we move the country towards competitiveness, right? We have to, we have to reevaluate a lot of things within the educational sector. We have to, we have to itemize all of the different challenges, what are those challenges are, are, are related to policy um, reform that is needed or direct action that is needed to invest in education, in infrastructure. Um, take, for example, there are, more, there are more students going to school in Liberia today in the urban area as compared to the rural area, right? In the rural area, we, not only we are facing uh, infrastructure challenge, but also there are fewer schools in terms of the ratio between uh, students and school. So how can we move the country towards investing more in infrastructure, getting more schools in rural areas, right? So that our students are not just learning, but then we also have to address the issue of un unqualified teachers that are roaming around our classroom. Already the ratio between students and teachers are very low, but then there's a bulk of them who are already unqualified. So what do we do? Do we incentivize the teacher training um, institutions that are already existing? Or do we have more private and the teacher training institutions that can beef up the strength? 
So in Thank education, you. we want to Dar ensure. Dara, can I, can I, can I come in? Oh, 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 we'll come back to you. I, I, I don't want our Muhammad to call to fall asleep. We are producing a national competitive uh, uh, environment where institutions of learning that are supplying um, the workforce are producing quality and not quantity. Thank you. Th thank you. Let me bring in uh, Mr. Sharif and then call can follow. Mr. Sharif, uh, I don't know if you get what I'm looking for is, uh, you know, if you talk to me now, what is my vision for FOL? I say, by the end of this time, I want to see uh, uh, FOL TV station established in Morovia that is able to cover the entire West Africa. I, I want to set, I want to see something at the end that uh, Mr. Buaka or through arrest that you want to accomplish. I'm not hearing it. What are you hearing? Yeah, uh, Dennis. First, uh, thanks for your for your concern that um, that that we're going to fall asleep. Uh, I'm I'm really uh, Anthony is doing a, a a good job here for me, so he's he's keeping me away. <laughs> so, uh, um, look, your question is your question is well in place, uh, and, and that is the reason why I think we're discussing this uh, tonight. Um, the the former vice president, um, you know has these goals again they're, 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 what are the objectives to arriving at these uh, uh, goals um you know the former vice president the last time he had any uh, major press uh, conference was three weeks ago that's a long long time ago when you talk about a politician uh who is uh, a top tier um and so you know when you talk about agriculture uh, what is he trying to do? And believe it or not, the former vice president, among all of the candidates, uh, you know, uh, from the president down, he has a very impressive resume in the area of agriculture. Why aren't they tapping into that? Because back in 1980, uh, the PL uh, 480 program, when the former vice president was uh, the director of the Liberia Produce Ma Marketing Cooperation for two years, uh, two or three years, I, I'm not quite sure now the number of years, uh, he, uh, the LPMC, uh, you go back into, uh, you know, different reports, LPMC during this time period did very well uh, under the, the PL 480 uh, program. Uh, why aren't they talking about that? And not just talking about these issues, why aren't they uh, documenting this? Why isn't a website up somewhere where we can research and find this? Where, why is this not anywhere that, you know, please someone help me. Uh, the uh, co-panelists that spoke before me uh, didn't give us any sort of a reference uh, point where, you know, we can go to find this kind of information. You're talking about a, a major candidate. You're talking about a president in waiting. Someone who can be president of the Republic of Liberia in January 2024 has nothing out there uh, telling the Liberian people that this is his ultimate, uh, uh, this is uh, his objective to getting uh, Liberia food uh, sufficient. This is someone who has served for decades, uh, you know, impressive resume. And there is nothing, the, 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 the details are very, very thin. And so they want us to believe that you can just go to a press conference, you can just go to a radio station and talk about arrest. First of all, arrest, this is not a, you know, politically this this name sounds, you know, this is, this, this is, it's so weird, kind of, you know, it's not a real good catchphrase, arrest. You're arresting. What, what, so, you know, who are you arresting? So, you know, I mean, you look at these things. So someone has to, who is form, formulating these things for the unity party and the former vice president, who is with him in the room talking about these things and fleshing out the details. Uh, I, I need to see that because it's very sketchy. When it comes to agriculture, it's very sketchy. When it comes to roles, he's talking about roles. He's talking about feed, feed or roles. Torba have feed or roles. George Weir can talk about these same things also. As dormant as George Weir is, he can talk about feed or roles. Uh, uh, Cummins, Alexander Cummins can talk about feed or roles. Dennis, heck, I can talk about feed or roles if I throw my hat in the ring tomorrow. You can talk about feed or roles too. So what makes you different, Mr. Former Vice President? That is the issue. You have to be able to distinguish yourself when you lay out these goals, uh, so it's not enough to go to a radio station to say, I have arrest, uh, it, it stands for this. 
R stands for this. That stuff is elementary, right? So we don't, we, that's not what he needs to do at this time. You need to come out with a detailed platform, for instance, sanitation. I believe that George, uh, Mr. Tule here has some knowledge on sanitation. So contact people, get in touch with partisans and people, individuals. It doesn't have to be your inner circle. Individuals who have knowledge of certain areas, you, you get in touch with them. That's how you come up with policy. But I don't see that at this time. And certainly you don't want to get into tourism because nothing he has said about tourism uh, sounds to me like they are very serious about tourism. So, you know, Thank you. Uh, this is how I see it. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. If you're just joining us, this is Focus on Labra and this tough talking. So if you hear us talking tough, it's time for it. We are discussing arrest. That's the vision of aspirant Joseph Numa Buakai for the country. Let me bring in uh, Carl Famler for her take on arrest as presented by our colleagues, Lara Mann and George. I like the acronym arrest. Um, I think it. I think it's uh, it's appropriate if used in the context that I'm thinking of it. I mean, rule of law and development are strongly integrated, right? So, um, to be able to do anything, <laughs> anything at all, you need to have the assurance of law and order, and make sure that processes are followed. Um, and there's consequences uh, not following processes. So Liberia looks very functional on paper. We have lots of rules. We talk about public works and public sanitation. We have zoning laws. All of those laws that are on paper are simultaneously violated. Hmm. And no one cares, right? No one does anything about it. Police have checkpoints, vehicles pass through all along that are not registered. They don't arrest cars that are illegally plying the streets until it's, 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 it's you know, enforcement weekend or enforcement week. This is backward behavior. Anytime, even if we don't have patrol cars, cotton tree, every car has to stop. You know, you've got guns going towards Banga. You've got checkpoints all over the country where police are there, all kinds of people are there to inspect. Stop those cars. There's no rule of law. The police don't do their jobs. Law enforcement is not empowered or trained or educated to know what they're supposed to do. Uh, public works, you've got all of these people on payroll taking pay and they're not doing their jobs. People can just get up and start building a house. They don't need a permit. The law says they need a permit. People can just get up and put a latrine over the Maserata River. It is already illegal to do that. Nobody cares. They just let them continue to do it. Um, we're talking about LOFA and agriculture. Maserato County was a breadbasket for like, right? So we, we're talking these things. A lot of problem that I have is that we repeat things. We repeat things without really giving it much thought. There are, I mean, there is more than enough land by the Maserato County administration to grow food, to feed Liberia and export food. So while we're talking about having farm to market roads, we need to realize that we have farmland already on our roads that is owned by the government that we're not utilizing. I mean, most of the, the, the rice, the arable rice, I mean, it land, a rich land in Montserrat County is owned by the government. I mean, perfect for rice farming. All of this stuff is already documented. People have done these studies. It's already on paper. But our people don't read. We get into systems, we just want to reinvent everything and act like, you know, it's um, it's really disappointing. I would have expected people to, here's the short-term goal. While we're working on these road projects that cost a lot of money, we have a huge population that is stagnant in Montserrat County. We also have a lot of land in Montserrat County excessive amounts of land that are not being utilized, owned by government. We're going to turn these things into projects, grow rice on this land. They're all already on paved roads, just empty sitting there. But instead we're talking about building roads, highways to Lofa, which is also a good idea, but what are we going to do today while that's in process? And just people have a mindset that only Lofa is the breadbasket. Nobody wants to think about, God, what about the 
the one million acres of land between Margibi and Monserrado owned by the government. What do you want to do about that? You know, so that's some of the, um, but I like the acronym. I think that, um, and, I, and I like what it stands for and the rest, especially if they talk about, we're going to achieve uh, by implementing law and order and, and making sure, because there's no development without, without law and order. If somebody goes and takes their deed to be signed and the guy, the commissioner, the land commission is corrupt, which I know that's exactly the case, trying to export money from people in order to deed agricultural land already being utilized and nobody does anything about it. Every time they're extorted from them, they're abused, you know, all, so you've got all these people sitting at the helm of, 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 of um, access for investors and they're extremely, they're incompetent at times and even if they are competent, they wanna extort money from people. These are the things that need to be arrested before we can move forward. And so I like the term arrest, I, I like it a lot, but I think we just need to better articulate, you know, the, the situation. And I think the solutions, the solutions need a bit more attention. I think the, some of the things that we're saying um, seem to be just rep, rep, repetition and we're not looking at really what, what is obvious and around us that can be utilized. Thank you. Uh this is the, uh, I, I don't want to say an uh, arrest call. You, you kept saying, you know, I arrest it, and uh, you, you make me to think about it differently. I would have thrown a T in there to say attest instead of arrest because I get scared, maybe because uh, I stay in the war. But no, we're going we're gonna to arrest, arrest the dysfunction. I think every politician that's aspiring to be president of Liberia needs to think in terms of law and order right. and putting back that trust so that people can do things right you but know unfortunately call uh rule of law is not in arrest okay uh they are the black Eye vision does not address the issue of governance and uh, you, let me ask you something rule of you brought us here to listen to you pontificate or you brought us here to ask questions so that we can address when we when we attempt to address uh, the let question, me, let me, you interrupt I'm, us and tell us oh no this is not what you expected us to say Allow us to say what we but, want but, to but, say. But, and then let me ask you the question now. Therefore, you act as if you brought a bunch of idiots on the show to Julie. come and just waste our time. So if Julie, you, let me ask you, if you have your friends, friends. Let, me, no, let me hold on, Julie, Julie, hold on, Julie, let me talk. Let me talk, brother. If you have I all the answers you need us, and say you should talk. then there's no need for us to be here. There's no need for me to be here. No, honestly, because I'm not saying you don't have the right to say what you're saying, but we are taking our time to... How you want me to say? Just say, oh, arrest. One step for road, one step for, 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 for education, one step for sanitation, and that's it. I can give you the plan for agriculture you, if you give me the time. But you don't well, want me to give me the chance. Let me let my premise and ask you the question, uh, 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 Julian. Okay, okay, go ahead, sir. Anything right. you want to do, guys want to do, do it. This is not my first time going down this trajectory. And I find it frustrating that Anthony was sitting there in the link in the chat. And talk crap to people <laughs> with disrespectfully or for, for no reason. You if you bring me why here, are we so you, angry today, George? Let's I'm listen, George. I've been up since five o'clock. If I come here, if I take my time to come here, I deserve to be respected and time given for me to address issues. George, you're not representing you you're not representing and Anthony is in the background. George, can you give me a chance to live the premise and ask the question? This is not how you run a show. You know, anyway, go ahead. I'm here. Anything you want from me now, I would just say it, but I had to get it off my chest. Yeah, but but I didn't say that to you. If Anthony says something in the chat But then room, you should tell him to stop, because you can't bring your guest, and then the other man is in the background. And but this is Tough Talking Thursday. We're supposed oh, to be oh, supposed oh, to oh, 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 If you are hosting the show, he will kick me off the show. Bro, listen. This is good. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I'm not a child. I George, am listening to that nonsense. I'm I thought I was fussy today. George, I, I thought my one was fussy today. No, you, know, you know me, I take crap, but sometimes it's enough <laughs> enough. Now, I'll be, I'll be honest with you. If you guys will invite me on the show, I will come. I'd love to be here. I'm seeing myself as part of this family, but I cannot come. We can invite anybody on any show and then we start harassing them in, 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 in the back, background. It doesn't make sense. To be honest. 
right? Why are you reading his chat? It's not a chat. Go ahead. Are you finished? Let us please take a draw to show our big you. Let's go. Are you finished? Just give me a chance. Let me leave my premise and ask my question. If somebody says well, something to you in the chat room, you don't bring you on the show. This is not what we are doing here. No, no, so no. Please. But if somebody insults me in the chat room, I'll bring you on the show. Yeah, but uh. you don't be responsible for that. Yeah, but tell him he's your man. So tell him to stop. He's behaving like a child. All right. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead. So let, let's look at, let's let's look at arrest, right? <clears throat> for arrest, and the mm -hmm. question for you, uh, Larama and George, the question for you is, Arrest does not address the issue of governance. We talk about rule of law that everybody is crying about. We talk about governance issue. And before you do any of these things, rule, sanitation, tourism is the economy. So I don't see economy. I don't see rule of law. I don't see health. If everybody is sick, we can't do anything, right? So mm -hmm. why is it that educate that uh, health, the economy, and rule of law are not a priority in arrest? You want me to go first? Yeah, go ahead. So first of all, um, let me just register before I answer your question that um, anyone who is running for president do so with a particular set of vision for the country based on their understanding of our history and based on the current moment of complexity that the country is faced with. Um, I think it is disingenuous to, to suggest that T is supposed to be in the acronym of someone else's policy as opposed to Z and why this is not there. Um, I remember when I voted in my first election in 2005, the learned consider from Liberty Party had triple R, reconciliation, reconstruction, and rehabilitation. As we sign in to represent the platform upon which he could move Liberia in a fundamentally new direction. There were not a presidential candidates that sum up the understanding of the moment we are faced with as a nation to tackle primary things under your administration. The vision that Joseph Yuman Baraka has for Liberia is no different. If we were just cataloging everything into one, we would have just say A to Z and find every word to represent each letter. That's not how you built a nation that has been ravaged by 14 years of civil war that our post-conflict experiment and experience has vitally filled with two successive governments. You intend to tackle the things that you can tackle as a primary driver mm -hmm. to lending your country to prosperity. So for us, these are the issues that we'll tackle primarily. Does health feed into the overall vision, yes. When you educate a nation, people make informed decisions. People make better choices into in, in terms of their health behavior. The nation spends far less in terms of um, investment in, in medication and other things that otherwise curable diseases are killing people. When you deal with sanitation issue, and by the way, there are a lot of investment returns when we invest properly in dealing with sanitation. I know when um, the United Party Ellen led government was uh, was in power, that model was tested to community based enterprises. And you found a lot of people who were working at community levels creating jobs for people who were involved in sanit waste and sanitation. Mm -hmm. That also expands the economy. And the driver is that a healthy nation, a healthy people, move the country forward. If we're investing, if we're investing millions of dollars on just the supply chain of jokes acquisition, 
we can otherwise use that money in other areas. So health ties into the overall vision, the value of the fight that when we move our nation from this state of illiteracy and educate our people, when we invest more into primary and secondary and tertiary education, our people live far better, healthier life than we have seen in the age where people are just not informed, they do not have access to the rightful information and awareness on how to live better. You talk about the rule of law. Mr. Walker have enumerated times in and out that the culture of impunity has been a cancer. And one way to dealing with some of the complex problems that we have is to ensure that we put an end to the culture of impunity. I don't see any arrest. That's well, what I was highlighting. That's what we, that's what we that's what we said. Primarily, these are things we are going to tackle. But as a nation, there are things that come through the window that will be addressed. Um, Thank you, Larma. Can I come in a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. And Josh, for you to add to that, education. Uh, this to me is most of them things like long term plans, right? If you want for education. By the time that, you know, we say we're preparing from primary. By the time they get to twelfth grade, I mean, uh, six years out. If we plant okay. one cocoa tree today, it's going to Actually, take some time. Let me, so, let me let so me go road, back a little yeah, bit. Let, let me let me land the, the, the thoughts. So road, I mean, uh, 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 what do you mean, Dennis? And education is to, to me as long term mm -hmm. plans. How is Ms. that's why I was talking about the economy. So how is Mr. Boaka going to do these things in the short term? Yeah, okay, but let's go back to the economy. Let's go back to the economy. The first thing I want you to realize is this. Um, Marasali laid some foundations for Liberia in different sectors that George Weah and his people have worked to, to demolish. So we're going to be starting over in a lot of sectors. And one of the things that you talked about, the economy, agriculture is a major driving component for economic growth. Agriculture. Let me say this. We import between $150 million to $200 million worth of rice in Liberia every year. One of the things that we have talked about and we're going to do is that within the first five years, to because Larma mentioned the recapitalization, or let's just forget about the recapitalization because there are many legal things that come with that come we have considered the recapitalization of the agriculture cooperative development bank but there are a lot of legal things that we need to consider uh indemnification uh the act the issue of credit uh uh how you call it said defaulting on credits to to people who had money in the bank and all that stuff so we may just open a new agriculture bank we need that bank and he talked about last time uncle joe was on he talked about the the the, the creation or the strengthening of cooperatives but if we have 200 million of library of dollars u.s dollars from the library economy going out to buy rights to bring to input rights into the country within the first five years we want to target at least between 50 to 75 million dollars of that money to, to go into local the pockets of local farmers by incentivizing <laughs> farming, rice farming on the local market. I mean, on the I mean in Liberia, now on the local market, the local rice production, at least 75, maximum of 75 million within five years. That money going in the pockets of local farmers will transform local economies. Okay, and how do you do that? You do that by incentivizing farmers. How do you incentivize farmers? You you make sure that the cooperative already have the CDA, it's already established. You make sure that through the CDA, you go into rice producing areas and you ensure that farmers are, are collectivized into cooperatives. Very, very important because more farmers coming together to pool their resources, pool their land, they can get a lot done than individual farmers. So we want to try, we want to take Liberian farmers from the place of subsistence where they just grow a little bit for themselves and the extra they sell. We want to take them from that perspective to 
looking at farming from a global perspective because our neighbors right here, Ivory Coast and Ghana, they are both basically agronomies. And because of that, we have perfect examples of how people can use local, just local farmers to create like Kenya does, little acreages planted every year contribute towards the whole because of the, the, the topology we have in most of Liberia, we cannot use mechanized farming. It's so difficult to prepare the land. It will cost so much because the land is so rocky and difficult to clear. And it's not even plain. I mean, straight land. Most of the land, I remember growing up, most of the farms that we did were on hilly areas. And as a result, it's difficult to use tractors that you have in, in the prairies in America here, or other places that have plain land. So that's, that's we don't nice have... Question. Yeah, it's, 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 it's the fact. So can can I, I, can I, can I, I just want to just... Just say something. Yeah, well, Listen, okay, the topography of Norfolk County is not the topography of the entire country. But no I mean, you got like you at one time had the largest plantation on the planet, which was Firestone. We have a no, lot no, of no. land that yeah, is well, not hilly and rocky. We have a it lot of very good. I just don't want you to give that kind of misinformation. It's not misinformation. That, it's the truth. It is. We have. We of our farms. Can, oh, okay, call it a point. Let, it, let him finish. Then you can come in. Always not misinformation. Why do you think ADA lab went way to FOIA to open a rice farm? Why do you think so? Because the areas. Yeah, that's where I had are, access to land. Listen, listen to me now. The areas that you have at least lands that can be cleared. Like, like the rolling hills, the rolling plains that, that are just outside of Monrovia going all across Montserrat and Margibi, they already have uh, uh, farms on them. They already have, you know, uh, or how you call it? Um, that's why Firestone planted the farm where they planted the farm. Because it took are, you, are you serious right now? They took some of the best arable lands that we have. You know, do you, you know that I've, I, I would be charged with the public land vetting for, for, for the country? Do you know that? Yes, I see wow. something for you. Hold on when I finish you. I'm no, telling you what I know. You're arguing based on what I you am think. I'm also talking okay. about what I know. I grew up in agriculture. I know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. right, 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 we have Josh, a lot let me, of let me land land. You can't Josh, Josh, Use okay, the last one up. minute to finish and call you. What did I say here? And I will say it again. I said most of the farming land in Liberia are not suitable for large, mechanized farming. Why? Because our lands, most of our lands, they, they, we don't, we, we have it's issues land. with rocky land, we have issues with, with hilly lands, we have issues, our lands are not clean and right. flat. What study are you citing? I am telling you what Liberia is. Check it out yourself. If you want me to cite studies, I can cite it for you. Uh, uh, that's what I'd like you to do. Go ahead and do. Do. Yeah, it's this. When I finish, you can come in. That's what I said. Let, yeah. let, let, me, let me make my point. My point is this. Our lands, most of our land are suitable to small holders, small farmers that can farm the land because of, like I said, the, 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 the challenges of using machinas farming. Our lands are swampy. Most rest farms have huge swamps on all sides of it. So as a result... They, when it comes to flat land mechanized farming, we don't have enough of it. The, right. the places that were best for it, uh, 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 what, 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 uh, Dennis, people took large acreages and planted uh, either rubber farm or palm farm. So, so what's the point? So the point is, which one comes first, the economy or agriculture? You know, no, but agriculture, like I said, agriculture is the driver of the economy. And Let where are you going to get money from to, to do that? We, you'll find money. There are enterprise funding out there. Okay. You can borrow money. Listen, you can borrow money. You can borrow money to incentive to, 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 to invest in agriculture. Because let me say this to you. If we would change Liberia, it will build an economy. The main driver will be agriculture. Not, not extraction. Not mineral extraction, but agriculture. Thank you, Thank you Josh. With agriculture, you can do value addition. And when you Thank do you. value addition, you add more money, you attract more foreign foreign uh, uh, exchange into your local economy. Thank you. Thank you. Carl, you can, you can make your point now. I was just saying that we actually do have enough arable land in Monserrato County that's owned by the Monserrato County Administration, which is essentially government. Um, and these studies have already been done. Uh, we vetted all of the public lands in Liberia in 2009. 
So this is an informed, um, not even an opinion, this is just um, But I think some of this, the, 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 the issue I'm having is that normally when you're formulating policy, you're doing so based on studies, based on recent and the most up-to-date information. Um, and I, I'm not really hearing that. That's a little bit disappointing for me. Um, but it's good to build on the past, but it's also good to use the new and up-to-date information that's available today. We study history because it informs how we got here, but you also have to understand the future and you have to understand the present, right? I mean, you have to understand the present and plan for the future. Um, we have to start thinking differently. Uh, while I agree that there are parts of Liberia that are hilly, we have enough arable agricultural land, very close proximity to the city, that can produce enough food to feed the country. This is a fact. If you don't know this, you don't know how to plan for it, you don't know how to utilize it. So the very first process of agriculture is a actual land assessment. Going to the land authority and saying, hey, can we get all of the information that you all gathered when you land survey? And you start from there. The other thing that, 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 that's interesting um, and important oh, is- can I ask a question? Yeah. Just let me finish. Yeah, go ahead. I interrupted you. Go ahead and interrupt yeah, me. No yeah, problem. Yeah, I want to know where, where in Montserrado does this land exist that is not owned by, by you say it's owned by government. It's, uh, what's the acreage? Montserrado County Administration land. You want me to give you GPS coordinates? What are you What are you basically asking? No, I'm just asking you to tell me the area the land I said Montserrado County Land Administration has no, a lot I of know, land. but you said that the survey was done. If you can just point me to the general area that this land is. Well, there's there's a lot of land in Todi. There's a lot of land in different areas. Even in the city of Morovia itself, there's not Monterado County Administration owns property. But there's a lot of land, especially in the Todi area, that is owned by the government. But, you know, and then there's uh, a lot of land in Bomi that's public land. There's a lot, I mean, all over the country, there's a lot of public land. Even going out towards, in, in, contrary to what people believe, even going out towards, um, uh, what is it called, Carisburg area, there's still government land. Everything isn't privately owned in Liberia. Yeah, but for, Bong uh, County, the, the has, Bong County have, has a lot of, Bong County, Margibi, Monserrato, Balmy, all these areas that have already have roads have so much government land. Yeah, Beyond I agree. That, but the question, the, the, you, the, the objection you raised, was the point that I said that we don't have a lot of land suitable, especially where the- I disagree. I disagree. And so what I'm going to tell you to do, mm -hmm. since you're part of this think tank and this team, why don't you, when you have time or whoever's on the ground, go and get an assessment of Montecarado County land and all of these surrounding areas, and then formulate your, your, your thoughts based on actual data but I don't have GPS coordinates off the top of my head. I'm just letting you know. We were part of the vetting exercise and there is a lot of land available. One of the things that we were FAO, uh, by the Food and Agricultural U uh, UNFAO is that just the Montserrat County Land Administration alone could produce enough food to feed the country. No, we're not. We're not and those, and those, those were experts. Those were experts in 2009. So we don't need to go yeah. back to 1982. No, I'm we're not about experts in 2009. The, the issue here, you see, I never said we didn't have arable lands to no, feed. But, oh, no, truly, I think I think here is the point that uh, we need rules in order to uh, rules. What the point she's making, you, we need rules to a uh, local county so that we can, because that's a bread basket. No, 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 that's not the so, point. That's not the point. That's you not what I was it. saying. Okay, now, I George, said, I let you interrupt me. George, I let you interrupt me. Let me finish my point, then you can do whatever. Okay, so ahead, besides the fact that we have enough arable land that is owned by the Monterado County Administration to be able to grow enough food efficiently to feed the country, beyond that, we have road reserves all over the country. We have road reserves and road plants. I don't know if all of the road reserves are finalized, but we have a lot of road reserves that are already laid out plans for roads. And 
while we're looking for resources to do that, we're going to have to build the economy. We're going to have to build our tax base, utilize what is available, what is close by. And it's almost, it's a state of emergency. There's no reason for this long-term plan for agriculture. Execute with what you have right now. And oh, that, that, me, that's my concern. That was all me, I wanted to say. Let me just, let me just interject, right? Mm -hmm. You know, a, a comprehensive engagement was done when, with the passage of the new land, I, I, you might be a little familiar with that. I'm very familiar with it. And one of the things that came up all through that national consultation was the fact that smallholders were complaining that they were being charged exorbitantly by land administrators all across the county. I know you're specifically talking about Monserrado. Um, not for just the uses of the land, but just a small plot, right, that they can do their little sustainable farming, right? Mm -hmm. To a larger extent, that is one of the major problems that smallholders are faced with across the country. Now, land administrator... You're, 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 let me ask, you're oh, saying oh, that oh, people... Oh, 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 I just want to understand what he's saying. You're saying that tra that that uh, when land administrators around the country. Hang, hang on, I just want to clarify. Are when you're land, small land administrators around the country are not giving land free for people just to do farming. How you been the case? Land administrators are not the only people who issue land for farming. They're really issued by by the by the by the uh, by tribal authorities. All right, but that's not that's not the case that we we witnessed through other consultation across the country. Because in, 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 in Lewa counties, I don't know how mm -hmm. much of that happens in Montserrat because there are not there are not a lot of farming. I mean I I did the, I love the betting place, especially for, that for, um, that cash crops. Cash crop farming really doesn't really take place in Montserrat as compared uh, compared to other counties, right? Right. During that consultation, mm -hmm. a lot of what came out in addition to you know storage capacity and other things was how land administrators we're exploiting smallholders. So what we are saying is that no, I understand. it is just not, you know, an easy thing to say, oh, they are land all around Montserrado so people can do farming all that thing. It doesn't work like that in my mind. And this is, I'm referencing- Why, why is that? Why doesn't it work that way when the land is government land? People themselves who are affected by this situation. Now, right. My question is, I'm talking about government land. I'm not talking about privately owned land. I'm not even talking about um, customary land rights. I'm so talking who, who about land owned the government, who by government. government. Excuse me. Let, let let me let me redirect the discussion before we. No, I just want to ask you answer this question. What was your question? Who who administers the government land? The government. Who, well, it depends. Please, if it's the county administration, for, it's the county. Please, if it's if it's a, if it's a, yeah, if it's the yeah, central uh, government, let, it depends on what. Which, I want, I want, okay. let, let, read, right. let read that right before we get too much. Before we read that right, back to that look at, there was a point yeah. I wanted to make to that. Right, right. I just want to make your so point quickly because I have a question for you. Well, hold on, George. Uh, Yonton, please complete your thought. I have a question for you. Okay, my point is that the focus in terms of short-term goal could be. Um, in the areas of doubling production, right? Especially mm -hmm. for Liberia, you know, cash crop, you know, industry. If you look at what's happening at the moment, you have most of the people that are in, involved in, that's for example, cocoa production. Um, in addition to the small scale of um, small holders, right? There are many people who are in government already and think that, you know, based on what they make, they can have one one or two farms here, right? Um, for export purposes. Um, if you look at the robot uh, side of the whole thing, Firestone has had monopoly for since God know when. We have not been able to break that. Firestone sits over, over 200 square miles of, of land, right? As big as anything. But yet it's still when you go to these land consultation, people are complaining about land. Concession companies um, and local and local and local dwellers in many counties are clashing every day over land. Right. Right. Uh -oh. here, in West Let me ask this question. Well, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, please. Let's leave the land issue. 
let me ask this question, right? Because uh, there's a vision, so I don't want to hold you too tight on uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, what, what the, on the how. But here's the thing, right? Mm -hmm. Before you do, you, you craft this vision, you want to do some form of assessment, right? We talk about rules. We talk about sanitation. We talk about health. I, I, I want to know what are, for instance, why are there bar rules or why, why are there no rules? And what did the previous government do and feel that you're going to do differently? When it comes right. to sanitation, why do we have? Can we do it one? Can we do it one at a time? Because yeah, no, I'm just giving you a broad have... something you can react to it. Yeah, right? let me, let's do it one at a time. Yeah, no, you started uh, with let, rules. Let me finish. My, let me finish. You can take any one of them. Uh, one will give me an idea of what, where you're going <sighs> with it, right? Because you must know what the problem is. You must know what other people did and feel, and you're going to do differently. So just pick any sector for me. For instance, okay. I will start with rules. Why are contaminated? Why is that dead? And what are you going to do? Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's start with let's start. Let me start with rules because you mentioned rules. Yeah. One of the issues about rules is the fact that there is no desire by central government to keep the rules possible throughout the years. Why? Uh, over time, especially under Madame Salif, they prioritize uh, wages and salaries and everyday expenses, what we call recurring expenditure, to the point that they didn't re really reserve money for infrastructure or for actual development. So as a result, development was lagging behind. Now, they got all the funding to do, to redo some key roads. But besides those key roads, the rest of the roads were left lying fallow and people were made to, to, to endure their own fates going back and forth. Okay, so what, what would be different to keep roads open? I remember because the reason why I say this when, uh, when during her first turn, uh, the Bangladeshi Onbil group were very much active in making sure those ball points were in their areas of, 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 of operation. They made sure those ball points were, 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 were solid during the rainy season. And it's the same blueprint that we're going to do. Like, like we said, Jizab Baka have said it, in under his administration, he's going to make sure that administrative headquarters across the country, at least the key ones, have units of, 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 of engineers with machines that can be used, road building, road, road upkeeping machines that can be used to make sure that the roads are possible. The main thing is to make sure that during the rainy season, the country doesn't come to a standstill. While road construction is going on, these ball points and these feeder roads and these grade B, grade B roads are kept open throughout the year. And it's not, it's not impossible. It's just the, the lack of the will. On October, on October, there were enough budgetary allotments for feeder roads. I remember because I grew up near one in Vonjama. And, and they had all the machines you want to keep the road going. But on the door, the, the government, they started, the minister started stealing the money. The money was made available, but the, the people stole the money instead of using the money to keep the machines going so the machines started breaking. We're going to make sure that instead of just giving, and we said it, how much does it cost to keep one kilometer of one kilometer of unpaved road open if you're using contractors? That's a lot of money every year. So instead of doing that, we take the money, government herself will buy or go to her international partners and source for these machines, these equipment, and put it in key spots across the country so that those ball points are kept, the roads are kept open throughout the year. Thank and you. Let me tell you something. It, it won't be as expensive if we have our own graders, our own bulldozers, our own compactors, taking care of those and back holes, taking care of those ball points and keeping the roads open. And we'll get pay the local people to cut the vegetation from over areas that are, that are turning the ball points every year. You're asking me. I am saying you. to you, that arrest is a sensible approach to national development. We are not looking at the very big picture for the, the grander picture in 10 years. We want to implement steps that will bring relief to the people from the world go within the first 100 days. We want our people to see that we are engaged with them and we are driving development from their perspective, not Thank just you. from from a budgetary perspective, but from the perspective where the material well-being of the local people would be improved. So Thank you. Thank you, Josh. L let me bring in Mohammed. Mohammed, uh, maybe you see my point now that uh, long-term and short-term, because me, everything that- Let me take education before Mohammed comes in. 
Mohammed, Mohammed have not spoken for a long time now. So I want Mohammed to come in. Mohammed, go go speak say, speak to that uh concerning long term, short term. Uh I was I, Josh is talking about uh people gonna when you put these things there, people gonna steal it. Government people were stealing the money, and then when you put a tractor somewhere, they're gonna steal it. And that's why I was talking about the rule of law and infinity, right? So yeah. what what's your view on this? Because these goals look like they're gonna take they're going to out. I mean, they're going to take more than six years. You have to yeah, they are going to take a, a, a long time. And so, um, so uh, Rez, just just going back to the acronym again. Boaka himself, in a recent interview, says, "Oh, I want to be. I want to just let you know the R, the one R is not there. So it doesn't seem like the other word. So right off the bat, he himself has a problem right there. So." You know, make it palatable. You know, make, make you know this for political experience. Make make this thing palatable. You don't have to sit everywhere and try to correct yourself. It's all I'm saying. But that's not the main issue. The main issue is: Are these beneficial to the Liberian people in the short term, right away? So from day one, are they going to be uh, this sort of uh, revolutionized? Uh, uh, way or, or radical steps that you're taking to change uh, the trajectory of the country because where the country is going now uh, is not in a good direction. And so uh, one of the things you, you, you consistently ask the question, where is accountability? I think that somewhere in here or at some point in time, he has to be able to say to the Liberian people, when I'm elected, we're going to we're going to hold people accountable, including the former regime, the former administration. You know the former president. There has, he has to said be, that there has to be. On, excuse me, excuse me. There has to be right. There, there has to be this. George Weir has to feel that there is something coming, right? That that people are not just going to go scotch free because what's been going on is, you know, if I mean. right now he he's, he's probably thinking, and I and I know that you know. From, from everything that he, he's been doing, from everything that he's doing right now, um, he feels very confident that even if he's not reelected, even if, if he becomes a private citizen, that there will be nothing done. So it's been this culture of impunity. So one of these candidates, these major candidates- Mama, who, Why don't you ask who, us if he has said something about waiting. corruption? Excuse, uh, excuse me. One of these presidents in waiting. We're looking at arrest, George. We, we don't, we're not looking at what he said somewhere. We're looking at his vision. But that's, you know, you, you look what, at it, but this is these... what he is saying. He said he hasn't said anything about it. And it's we, not we'll, true. Go ahead, Mohamed. Yeah, hopefully we'll get through this. Uh, I'll, I'll get through this quickly, okay? Uh, so one of these... Uh, sorry, uh, sorry, go ahead. One of, these, one of these candidates have to be able to make sure that, you know, they are discussing these issues. Because everything that's going on, everything that I see, uh, it's it's you know we're not in, we're not in a good trajectory right now, and so the fact that accountability is not part of this uh, is is you know it, it it doesn't speak well. I think that accountability has to be you a see, part of see, it. We you see why I interrupt the Mohammed? Turn. Because Mohammed we can't continue to we can't continue to turn the page. Mohammed, we can't we can't continue to turn the page every 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 time a new administration comes in and say. You know, uh, we got to let bygones be bygones. We're going to turn the page. We can't continue to turn the page this way. There's a lot of damage being done to Liberia right now than ever in the country's history. So how can any new administration come in and let this go by the wayside and turn a new page and say, you know, hey, we are people of God, you know, you know, uh, Christ forgave, so and so forgave. You know, all of these things, the culture of impunity has gone on for so long. So that has to be a part of this platform. And, uh, you know, I, I haven't seen that yet, uh, but there is time. And I you think, that, heard you know, there is going to be a time where uh, he's going to have to discuss this issue. Um, George, I will, I will, re <laughs> I will really, you, 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 you know, you I will really, because you're going on a coming coming really without it. knowledge at all. I will really, really coming? I would really appreciate that you know you respect the debate, that you show some common courtesy. Um, I respect you, but just ask questions. Yeah. Listen, you the spent five I'm minutes talking about something the, that the Joseph Bokai took his time the, to address. The last thing I'm gonna, the last thing I'm gonna say, 
<laughs> Thank you, Dennis. The last thing I'm going to say is that well, you don't know about uh, it. So you then you ask oh, us. Hold on, George. Are you finished? Has spoken against corruption. The last thing, the last thing I'm going to say, Dennis, is that oh. regarding regarding farmlands, when uh, when George was talking about farmlands, uh, I can speak to that because you know I grew up in a farming community. My uncle was a was a trader and a farmer, so as a farm boy, I can speak to this issue most succinctly uh, on this platform. Uh, the, Cole is absolutely right. In that area where we were, uh, you know, in in the southeast there are lands right so people in that area fed themselves you know they weren't they weren't fed from from Mon from Monserrato. people in grand jita grand Jitans fed themselves and then exported some and so why why is it now that we're not able to do that it's because of policy so we need uh you know the ingenuity uh of someone who you know who has who has been there and i and i'm and i'm confident that boyka you know he has the knowledge and that's where i started my uh my discussion and i said that i give him credit and i did say that you know he has uh led the liberia produce marketing cooperation he was the minister of agriculture at one point at, at the point at the time he was at the liberia produce marketing cooperation uh, you know, you, you can look at the report. So I'm not just talking off the cuff here. I look at reports. And so if you look at the reports from that period, uh, the Liberia Produce Marketing Corporation did a very good job. So why don't you go to those kinds of models? People feed, people fed themselves during those days, during the days of, uh, of, of, of Torbert and, and, you know, and during the early days of those. So why don't you go to a model that have been successful? Th thank you. Cole, one thing about uh, messaging is uh, like we're, we're discussing arrest and from the beginning is, is this uh, uh, arrest me, mess is Dennis, the message clear? Dennis, Dennis, can the people relate to it? And can, Dennis, can, can you allow me to, 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 to respond to this man for Voko who come in? Josh, if you could just- The man established a wrong premise here and he put, he cast, he, he basically put my candidate in a wrong light and you, you want to move to Kohu and not and don't but give what, me the what, chance to why address you with your the inaccuracy. Oh, Larama wanted to come in before you go. Go ahead. Go, go ahead. Two minutes. Yeah. Okay. Listen. When it comes to accountability, just a Boca have said that even his own son will be held accountable if he commits crime. He was asked about the the present government if he, were he to succeed them. What will he do? He said the law will take its course. There will be investigations. If the law finds anybody culpable, the person will face the music based on the merit of the case. He's not going to get involved. He's going to find a very independent-minded Antony General to prosecute corruption in Liberia. You say you haven't heard it. That's why I say we, we you brought us here to inter, to talk to us. So if you if you want this ask, have your candidate spoken about corruption? What is his view regarding corruption? But you went off so, on so a tangent. Judge. Like, hold on now. No, you no, no. I, I, I got your point. No, but it's not you. It's it's Mohammed no, and the viewers and, out there. And that's, and that's why I'm here. That's why I'm here. So why now, you, then you if, jump, if, you, uh, you move into something as the man established. If, if, if Walker is speaking to these things, why aren't they part of his vision? But what, what do you mean? What do you mean part of his vision? Corruption, <laughs> not, corruption not vision? No, no, how he will deal with corruption. Anti-corruption is who Joseph Boca is. And he has said it, that look, listen, from day one, there will be a no, zero tolerance for corruption under, under me. And I can promise you, the person that I know, I'm talking about I don't, somebody- I don't, I don't, I don't see that. I don't see that in his plan, in this vision but that he has for the country. have to. How is it going to listen, target? Taco Listen, corruption. we were taking for granted. Let me tell you something. Our plan for Liberia is that the issue of corruption will be taken. The anti-corruption fight will be an everyday thing. It will not be. It doesn't have to be a plan. It has to be an approach to governance. It and has to be an approach, not governance. plan. And, and, uh, we're talking about plan that agriculture, that 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 roads, that healthcare, that education, that sanitation, whatever you want to call it. That one, a plan. The idea, the, the issue of bringing scruples. And property to the way we operate in government, it should be a way of life, not plan. There ain't no plan to fight corruption. The fact is this: we, when you, when you are employed in government, you know that you shouldn't be corrupt. 
And it's going to be laid out very, very clear from the beginning. And the lawyers will go out there and do your their point. job. Thank you. Yes. Carl, you, you work in these policy areas for long. Is, is that true? You don't have to, you know, your way of life, you can plan for it. You can put that on paper and say, this is what I want to see. <laughs> Uh, to me, my interpretation of arrest, the whole overall thing is that those key areas cannot exist without the rule of law. And that's why I like the acronym arrest, because it gives the premise that these focal points cannot exist without the rule of law. And I disagree that when people start working for government, that they automatically know that they should not do certain things that others know are wrong. Even in this advanced country, when you're giving, given a responsibility of public trust, you are constantly giving refresher courses in anti-corruption, anti-bribery, constantly. I undergo these courses all the time. Not because I haven't done them before, but because every single year I have to take these classes and attest to them. Even if you work, no matter where you work, as long as you're dealing with finances, people's money, you're dealing with anything position of power where people have to pass through you to obtain something. If you are susceptible possibly to being bribed, you have to constantly take classes. So it is not second nature. It is it's something that's part of rule of law is prevention, preventative measures, which are done through education and certifications and recertifications and putting in systems in place where you have to remind people, no, it is not okay. It is not okay to do things that we all think are normal. Liberia has become, uh, and it's been this way, many places in the world are this way, where things are normalized that are destructive. And there's, there's, ha there has to be an acceptance of this in order for us to correct it. You know, Dennis, you and I had a conversation about this once. This whole idea that government is elephant, meaning everybody's just supposed to go take what they want. You can't steal from people, but you can steal from the country. This is part of patriotism, re-education. The entire society needs to be re-educated and reminded of their responsibility, mm -hmm. especially those in positions mm -hmm. of trust. So that's where I would disagree. And again, I know that uh, Mohammed doesn't like this whole, in my mind, in my understanding of the overall picture, that stands for what needs to be happening in order to achieve the goals that are listed. Um, I personally um, would just advise that there's more, um, there's more th that before we talk about issues that we're fully aware and, and fully conscious of what all those that are available to government are. I think that that is important. I think it's important for people to actually um, have very informed opinions. Um, and, and the, the information is available, and then tap into the resources that are available. Thank you. If you, yeah, it, it, it's really important because I'm that's that's kind of where I'm 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 kind of weak a little bit. I'm like, wait a minute, how much work did we put into this before coming on the show? If you just joining us, this is Tough Talking Thursday. We are discussing arrest. That's the uh, Joseph Newman Buakai's vision for the country. If you want to take part, please call the number on your screen, 605-313-6004. The code is 791-403-POUND. Mr. Youngton, as we get our first guest, uh, you wanted to say something. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, I wanted to speak on education, but I don't know if the time will permit me. But let me let me just um, cycle back. Um, the Again, the vision, Iris, the Iris vision is the holistic vision that we have for the country. Um, along those lines, there will be different policy um, that will build up to the achievement of those vision. Um, the fight against corruption is obvious. Um, you know, when, 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 when it comes to policy formulation, there are two ways you can formulate policy, either to a rating document of policy or to to actions, right? Um, if Joseph Barker assumed the responsibility of the state on day one, it's clearly stated that ending the culture of impunity is high on his priority list. Therefore, 
He will go after people who have looted the state. So people have to answer. He appeared on one of the many local uh, radio stations and said that. Even his family member who were willfully engaged in the looting of the state will face the wrath of the law. And this is fundamental. People who know him by his track record, um, people who have worked with him over the years know who the kind of person he is, the level of integrity he brings to the governor's space. So there's no question about that. There's absolutely no question. So there are there are policy pillars that will be developed over a period of time that reinforce the overall vision um, and, and, and drive um, this vision in the direction of success. I, I just wanted to, to point that out. Um, but if you want me to go back on, on the education pillar, I could do it, or maybe after the course. You're muted. Dennis, what's going on? Dennis, we're waiting for you, and you're muted. OK, let me bring in the first caller here. Call out your name and where are you calling from? Yeah, uh, my name is Joe Marley McTree. I'm calling from Pennsylvania. Joe who? Joe Marley McTree. Joe Marley Oh, oh, Turek. Go, go ahead, Turek. Yeah, Joe. Yeah. Look, Dennis. Look, it's, it's a waste of time, you know? Don't say that. Because people like Joe. You hear me? Am I, am, I, am I on the air? Yeah, you're on the air, but it's, it's not a waste of time. Go ahead. Look, 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 hello, Dennis. I mean, realistically, it's a waste of time. So, what are you talking about, Joseph Parker? Joseph Parker, has, he has nothing. Too late over there, he's, he's trying to make, he's trying to, he's trying to make, he's, he's, trying, he's trying to make, you know, he's, he's trying to make an empty promise. What, what's the past for Joseph Parker? Mm. Mm. In the message of Joe Parker with, with, with NIG, why, why, why he didn't see that vision that he tried most with, 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 with Parker in the early stages of the election? To go after, to, to go after, uh, uh, to us, yeah. He got the promise, but he didn't open the door. Right, uh, Joe, let, let, let's, speak to the, let's speak to the vision that has been presented. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Joe, 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 all the people that like Joe, 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 Th thank you, we are. Let me bring in Thomas Kane. Thomas, you're live. Thank you, Dennis, and thank you to <clears throat> everyone on the platform. So, I think Liberia has a very long list of development needs. Mm. And sometimes when governments take the approach of solving all of them, they get lost. So I think we should be um, mindful of just asking the question, this is not in, that is not in, and all of that. To me, what would be interesting to me is to be able to see how the Unity Party arrived at these specific sectors, whether they are the real binding um, things that we need to address to be able to push um, development. Because I see Stephen Johnson is making comments that this is a plan related more to the economy. That is agriculture, rules, tourism, sanitation, all of that. So that's one approach that we can follow. That is, we find specific issues to deal with now, and then as we move on, we can be able to address other sectors. But this should actually be communicated well so the citizens can buy into this. When I want to be when Mr. Tule is on the issue of um, corruption, or let's say broadly governance, that it doesn't need to be in the play. I disagree with that. We have to plan for it because to even fight corruption, you need resources. You have these institutions to run. The problem with Liberia is corruption, even when the 2013 uh, binding constraint analysis was done, corruption came to the bottom. We had electricity and rules all the way at the top. But if we don't address the issue of corruption, it tends to affect 
progress in any of these areas. You see what is happening on the RIA road because of corruption. We are stuck with it. So we need to make sure that we address corruption in each of these sectors. And it needs okay. to be a cross-cutting issue in each of these plans. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thomas. Let me bring in uh, Elvis Morris. Elvis, you live. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ja. And I just uh, want to tell Mr. Tule, thank you very much for using your precious time to come on the show. <clears throat> we know you're very tired in the afternoon, but thank you so much for coming on the show. And then also I want to tell, you know, Ashi Vatopa and Mr. Tule, yes, sorry for last week, you know, I thought that the, the presentation was terrible, but I think this one up, you know, it, up, it, it surpassed them. But let me just quickly say this. You know, I think Mr. Uh, Muhammad Sharif said it uh, earlier on. You have somebody like Ms. Carl Famula sitting down on the show tonight who actually went to school for exactly what we're trying to hear about, public policies. She's an expert in that field. I'm sure there are other people who may be a part of the unity party who may have gone to school for you know, public policies and other things like that. But I think Mr. Sharif said it that you have doctors, you have economists, uh, not economists, but economists, you have, you know, people who are in the uh, agriculturalist. Are they not a part of the unity party? People who are excelling, people who are adept in these different fields who can give adequate explanations and the, the minutiae of these, you know, these different sectors so we, the stupid people, can understand it. Because no offense to Mr. Tula, no offense to Mr. Yanto, I don't know if they're agriculturalists or if in their personal life, these are no, things no. that they do on a day-to-day -day basis. No, that's not what they're But saying. the reality is, right, the reality is we need people who understand these things and the nuances of it for us who are not, you know, educated in that field to understand it on a, on a basic level. But mm -hmm. overall today, like you said, it was, I hate to say it, but it was a waste of our, our one hour so far because we didn't get any substantive, you know, detail or any, any education from their plans for our country. Thank and then you. lastly, I will just give you give you my my tabata if I leave. I think the the GMB interview that he did it was it was sad to watch. No, write your tabata. We we getting, get to that yet. So write it down. Yeah, the is getting old, and we we, we we have to take him off off international platforms like that. Write it write it down. The show tonight, but this one was hard to listen to. Thank you so much. Mr. Thank you. Thank Let you. me go to Mr. Aliu Kamara. He'll be our last caller for the night. Aliu, go ahead. You're live. Yes, and by the way, whatever I say, I'm responsible for it, and don't interrupt me nor cut me off, Mr. Uh Before I actually address the issue, let me say, uh, today, today, one of your problems has been that you want to discuss every subject in detail, and it's not possible. Uh, let's stick to what we know sometimes. I understand that Anthony said, and some contributors on focus on like there can be condescending. I've gone through that, but sometimes just stay within your lane and just give general overview of some things and stop acting like you can actually give details. Because we can't know it all. You know, but 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 then is you asked some questions tonight that I feel are some way somehow appalling in my opinion. This is not the business that I know. You say Joseph Brother does not have the word economy or economic in his, 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 his vision. I mean, how can you look at something called agriculture and ask where is the economy? You look at something called tourism, you ask where is the economy? You look at something called sanitation, then you ask where is the health? I didn't get that part. And then you could, you say that uh, the measure that included uh, corruption, look, you work for a company that's a mission statement, I'm pretty, pretty sure there's a mission statement uh, of either on your company website. There's only one line in there. Does that mean that all of the other department heads at your company are not functioning? Yeah, it's not this kind of question. Okay? Road <laughs> is security. Okay? Thank Food you. is also security. And we, we, we know that tourism brings a lot of employment, brings a lot of jobs in different areas, including hotels, restaurants, and other things. You don't call that economy? Thank uh, you. I think the show is, the show is it's wonderful tonight. It's great tonight. Uh, my big brother, Mohammed has been laying it. He's been laying it straight. And my young comrade over there from the United Party, very strong young man, and he hasn't been given enough time to actually elaborate, but I, but I trust him. 
And sometimes I'm not very good at these things because I don't have patience to explain the things that a guy like Dennis guy is always supposed to know. You know, I think they short answers. But thank you for thank, having me. Th thank you, Aleo. Mr. Yanta, your response to our callers. Mr. Yanta, you can respond to the callers. It's not hearing you. All right. Let's go to call for her response. <laughs> Dennis, also me, die. I can do. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So uh, I did not have the time to watch the the previous show, but I think, um, like George, I indicated earlier um part of the discourse is respect i think the um the host of focus on liberia should should begin learning from the, this moment to properly orientate and educate um uh, their callers because most of these callers are people who are familiar the regular callers so um it will reflect anyone who's watching the show that this is the kind of culture that um, that permeates itself. But as a regular participant of the show, I, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't think so. But I think um, the callers will have to be more respectful in their approach to how they engage in the discourse. Nobody is coming here to, to disrespect other presidential aspirants, you know, and I wouldn't hope that anyone disrespect Joseph Vargas for the mass fight that he's running for president or anyone that that chooses to espouse um, his vision. We should have respect in the discourse at all times. And I thought to flag that up. Um, Thank you, Carl. You're, you're asking me to respond to the callers. Um, yeah, and I think you heard that stand out that you want to respond to. <laughs> Wow. Um, I'll, I'll pass. <laughs> I'll, pass. I'll pass it to someone else. Yeah. Tula, your response. You know, Dennis, I don't want to sound... Enjoy, I don't please please come in. Sorry, let me just say this. The, the <laughs> only thing I'm going to say, and the reason I was going to pass is because, the, you know, I find it interesting that a lot of times we don't talk about issues, policies. We don't talk about a person's mindset. We don't talk about, um, you know, ideological reasons that we disagree with people. It turns into, oh, this person looks like this. We want to diagnose their demeanor. And this is very immature. I would really love to see a, a time when like Indian people can look at our political, understand what the ideological framework of the party is, and understand that the politician that that political party has chosen to be the front runner is carrying the overall vision, just like everywhere else in the world, right? But we, we haven't gotten there yet. And, and some of the problem with Liberia, not some, all of the problem with Liberia really, uh, because even the, the external ones that are, are, are um, benefiting from our chaos, all that stuff could be stopped if we, the citizens ourselves, just did a little bit better. Just raise the bar for our own conduct and our own minds a little bit better. Um, we really love existing in a state of sub-mediocrity on every level. We have to raise the bar for our own conduct, for our own scholarly conduct, for our own mentality. We have to be better citizens in order to make the country better. And, and that's why I didn't want to say anything because the sentiment is just so, you know, just basic. We have to do better. We just have to do better. Thank you. Mr. Tule. You know, you, you call us here and say, oh, come and discuss arrest. And we, we go about talking about arrest. Larman starts and he talks about uh, agriculture. He said, no, 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 that's not what I expect to hear. I want to hear something else that 
you are thinking about, and I'm not you, I'm not in your mind. And I know nobody here can communicate better than I can communicate from my own perspective, from my own thoughts. You can't speak my thoughts. So I'm the only person that can speak my thoughts. And I came to communicate. And like like, like uh, what the guy said, uh, uh, Ali, you said, mm -hmm. we cannot discuss every facet of a vision, given the time, with the interruptions, and then the segue into other discussions, and, and not even giving you a chance to to, to to address meaningful distractions from the points that you're trying to put forth, so that at the end of the day, they can say, oh, just a bunch of people came on the show and they didn't do well, because other people came on the show they didn't do well also. And for me, that's preposterous by any means. Because we know what we are talking about, and what we are talking about is common sense policies that are easy to implement from any perspective. Kawhi myself, she 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 sidetracked me when I mentioned the fact that most of Liberia's land is not good for mechanized farming. And I, I didn't say we didn't have areas of our land that 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 could be used for mechanized farming, but I'm looking at where the bulk of our farmers that are producing our food are from Yuma County and Lofa County and Bon County. The, 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 I, you didn't even give me a chance to talk about the, 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 the crisis, the food production crisis that is that is already coming in Liberia, where people are planting rice and cross-planting them with palm oil and rubber. And sooner or later, all these arable lands are going to be hogged by generational plants, cash crops. We didn't even come to those areas. And Ali, you say, oh, don't, don't act like you know more. And agriculture, I've been talking agriculture forever. Jimmy Eastman is on the on, 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 on he's he's watching. Everybody who knows me knows I talk about agriculture all the time. We cannot, and the, the thing we're talking about are common sense, the recapitalization of or, or the establishment of an agri bank, and the the the, the issue of, of of collectivizing our farmers into agricultural cooperatives. For the benefit, I can talk about everything. I can only talk about what the time you give me. And as soon as I start going, I get interrupted because there is a mindset to 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 produce a particular mindset that oh, we came and we didn't do well on the show because the other people came to and they didn't do well on the show. I, I don't see it. I'm not even going to give credence to people like Elvis because I mean, for me, he's an entity. He has no stake in this game. There is no need for me to waste my time with somebody who uh, doesn't even take one minute to appear on any show to address issues, but always come to cast expression and insult people because he, he's on the microphone and he can get protected by, by Dennis who will give him a chance to insult without putting back against the insult. You bring your guests, open the line, somebody's insulting your guests, whether intelligently or directly, and you allow them to learn and you allow them and he, he goes gently away. This is not the first time I've experienced this with people like Elvis and other people. But when we come on the show, or show what you said, people come on the show to discuss the, the vision of a political party, give them the chance to be able to discuss it from their perspective. If you don't, you will never agree with everything I say. Because guess what? You don't like Joseph Boca. And that is not news. But the fact is, we're talking about common sense approach. What do you want me to say? We will put federal or or, 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 or high quality said road work units in every administrative every administrative center of consequence one more you want me to explain about that one how the money Thank is going you. to come about you want me to tell you how the money is going to come about i'm not going to tell you how to, because the first thing we don't even have money to buy all those yellow machines out of our budget so we're going Thank to you. go to our international partners to source for funding or to even ask them for donations of these equipment to put into places that can be used I'm not coming to explain to you the alpha and omega of the plan. I'll tell you what what, what has happened in Liberia in the past and what can happen going forward. Thank I you. Now. Agriculture, for instance. I, and I, I say this because I, I, this, is, this is something I wish I have done it in school because this is something that I love. We have... Hey, thank you, Mr. Tule. Hold on, hold on, Dennis. I will learn quickly. We I'll, I'll give me one more minute. We have enough farming farmers in our country to feed ourselves how can we do it we can lay out the plan for you but you never gave us a chance okay. we talk about cooperatives we talk about the recapitalization of of the agriculture bank 
And we talk about finding fu uh, funding to incentivize farmers through these means. If you give it to one, you give under one farmer, he can he can default. But if you give it to a cooperative, they take the money and they use it together as a collective, and they they hold each other accountable. Thank you. We have, we have the plan, but you never give us chance. As soon as we start talking, you start interrupting. As soon as in the background, insulting and saying smack to distract you, and then so you can say, "Oh yeah, they didn't do well." Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sharif. Yes, sir. Um. I just, you know, what am I going to say? Look, you know, um, for a very long time, um, you know, we've had, you know, heated exchanges uh, on this platform on Tough Talking Thursday. Um, but, you know, heckling is a new thing for me now, uh, you know, today, at the, you know, on, on, on today. I mean, we should never get to a point where, you know, we don't allow the, the moderator to, you know, to ask the question. We should never get to a point where, you know, we don't allow uh, others to, you know, uh, complete their thoughts. Cause uh, you know, we learn, you know, I, I learn every, every time I come on here, you know, and I want to continue to learn, you know? Um, and so let's, let's give ourselves, the opportunity to learn. Let's give the audience the opportunity, you know, to hopefully learn from us. And we, as we learn from them, as we all grow together, uh, because the goal here, uh, to me, uh, as a student of journalism, uh, is to inform, educate, and entertain. So, uh, one of the things that we're doing right now is we're informing, right? So, this is not a comedy here. So let's be careful, uh, you know, what we say, you know, even your demeanor on the platform is like, is communicative, you know, how you present yourself, you know, how you, how you address one another. These are, you know, communicative and people pick up on this. So let's be careful. Uh, you know, we're discussing very significant national issue uh, that will affect the lives of millions of Liberians. And so, you know, uh, if we're sitting here as the conscious of the Liberian people, hopefully people will learn from us. And so, you know, we have to model ourselves in such a way uh, that reflect professionalism at all times. Th thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Tough Talking Thursday, and uh, we talk tough. I'm not afraid of criticism, so thank you. At this time, we're going to take a few second break. When we come back, we're going to go into our Tabata session every day. Somewhere in Liberia, there's Tabata going on, and we take some time to uh, highlight that. We'll take a short break. When we come back, please prepare your Tabata of the week. And if you are listening to us, also prepare your Tabata. And we're going to be right back. Welcome back to Tough Talking Thursday. At this time, we will go around the room and get your Tabata of the Week. Let me start with Mr. Sharif. Yes. So I, today, I'm going to leave the Lord Mayor alone. Uh, people have talked to me about this, you know, so I am going to give him a break this week. So I'm going to go to uh, something that's happening, <laughs> Cor is laughing. I'm going to go to something that's happening in South Africa. The president, uh, Cyril Ramaphosa, is in hot water. I wish we were doing this in Liberia. Uh, he, there's a, a commissioner inquiry have found, have, have called for his impeachment now. Uh, you know, legis, you know, parliamentarians 
of his own party are calling for his impeachment. Uh, just recently it emerged uh, re in recent months that $4 million was stolen from the president's farm. This money was buried, uh, you know, underneath his couch and it was stolen, allegedly stolen from his farm. And so the pre this happened in 2020 and the president never reported it, never reported it to the police. No one knows about this. And so when if people find out, so South Africans find out, and you know, the largest commission of inquiry, of course, and the president said, well, I earned this money. I earned this money from selling buffaloes. <laughs> so people are saying, what kind of buffaloes will earn you $4 million? So he's in real hot water. His own, you know, members of his own party in parliament, everybody is calling for his resignation now or his impeachment. You know, and I said to myself, that's $4 million, Syria Ramaphosa. We have in like what we have going on in Liberia, you know, three or four times more, and nobody is calling for anything with regards to George Ware. That's just my Tabata of the week. Thank you. Larama, what's your Tabata? Well, um, my Tabata is just the continuity of the president out of the country and. Quite recently, the chief of staff made some, you know, stunning revelation that people have been texting him to move in the direction of overthrowing the government, but he did not provide sufficient evidence to that. But I find it amazing how, um, in this day and age, the military state tr trying to get involved with politics and seeing what we have seen in the region, um, from Mali to gaining the Boko Haram Faso, um, it should be concerning for every Liberian um, because it's, it appears to me that the region is fast retrogressing to uh, the 1980s, where military dictatorship and military takeover was the order of the day. So we have to guard against that. Um, we want the soldiers, as much as we have disagreement with we are, but we want the, the military to know that they should not be involved with politics. Thank you. Carl? So, yeah, I mean, I, that was pretty much my tabata. I, I think um, I'm going to just say it anyway, because it's just so absurd. I think it, it, there's nothing wrong with me. Um, you know, I'm not going to change my tabata for the week. Uh, Major General Prince Johnson the third Tuesday um, warned that the army will not, um, you know, tolerate election misconduct and persons arrested will face the full brunt of the law. Man, you're not a police officer. You're a general of the military, and you're, you're not you're not 100. Okay, you're the you're the you're the general, and and, and soldiers in Africa, unlike soldiers in the Western world are armed and utilized against their own citizens, not against foreign threats. And this is a problem because in America, the military is protecting US citizens against foreign threats. Our military was completely created by the US government. 2006, <coughs> it dismantled the old AFL, created a new one from scratch, and they are literally trained and modeled after the American military, yet the mindset is still very, very, you know, <clears throat> backward and, and, and against the Constitution. It is not appropriate for soldiers to threaten to discipline citizens, mm. especially when the president is out of the country. If we had a functioning legislature, this man would be called in for questioning. <laughs> we wouldn't be talking about this on this show. And part of the problem is our president removed the actual chief of staff and sent him to the defense ministry to push papers. Now we're here. This is a problem. Mr. Tule. And if you just join us, Tabata is the Southeastern Liberal World main foolishness, nonsense. Mr. Tule, what's your nonsense of the week? 
I really don't have much to say about a lot of things that because the people have already said what they what are the issues. Um, the issue of General Johnson, I think he he made a mistake and he shouldn't double down on it. He's a good guy, good leader. And you speak to the AFL troops, they will tell you he's a he has he has done a good job. He has been a good person seeking the interest and welfare of his, of his soldiers. So on that, I will call him a slack. I think he misspoke. He has no business getting involved in civilian affairs or the affairs of law enforcement. He's not a law enforcement official. But yeah, he's a member of the Joint Security in Liberia, quote unquote, uh, Joint Security Commission or whatever it is. And uh, but still, they that's what we have the Justice Minister for. Now, issues Thank like you. that. If somebody if somebody incites you to to commit an insurrection, I think you should. Is a is a is an offense except it's their family a very close friend but they are those are very serious offenses and they should be brought up for questioning but the reality here is this what led to such uh occasion for people to even raise up an issue and pointing point to him and say any oh, any tabata mr mr Tule? <laughs> Huh? Any Tabata? Oh no. But at the Tabata then, nah, the, the, what 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 he what, what led to him? The president, the me Tabata is the president abdicating his his position, leaving the country, and and basically providing opportunity for people like General Johnson to 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 say statement now that he would disgrace himself. So that, that's Tabata. That's everything is just foolishness. If the president in Liberia. Prince Johnson will not be making that statement. You only have the occasion to address it in the first place. Thank you. My, my tabata is to see one, you know, one guy writing on the president's clothes, saying that's autograph. I thought that was a big tabata. He's the president. It doesn't matter. He's a star. Hmm. Stars are the one who give autograph. Stars don't take autograph on their clothes. Oh, well. He's still taking autographs from other stars. He's the biggest star. You don't see uh, Messi taking autograph from what? Uh, from <laughs> okay. Ever said my Tabata of the week is seeing a weak and frail JNB on an international platform struggling to speak and articulate his vision. Talking alone seems to be a chore for average. You're still behind this ageism business. Let's discuss. Real issue and not age and uh, my Tabata is just too late talking over Dennis. <laughs> uh, Mohammed, somebody say say it's sweet for you. <laughs> Jimmy Eastman can't wait and to, and to get a revenge. My sincere apology, Mr. Tule. Please, I'm sorry. Flomo Livingstone, my Tabata is Liberians in America who vote for all politicians here, but they don't want all person to be president in Liberia. Uh, and then Tabata, Josh, uh, Jimmy Isma is talking about the same, uh, the Tabata being from the army chief. So I don't find that comment anymore. So, all right. At this time, we're going to go around the room and uh, get your closing comments. We are exactly two hours. We don't want to keep this long. Let <clears throat> We want to wrap this up. We're talking about arrest. So, Mr. Tule, let's start with you. Arrest. Your closing comments. Yeah. Um. What I want to say is that arrest is a common sense vision for implementation. Very common sense. And one of the things that have afflicted Liberia over the past is because we have relied too much on uh, syntax. We rely too much on complicated language, so it brings about complicated approach to governance. And all Jesus Broker have said that he wants a very common sense approach to governance. And so arrest forms the bedrock of his common sense approach to governance. 
And one of the things is about bringing deliverables into the lives of the people. You don't need to waste time with a lot of stuff. As we go on, we can address more complex issues. But uh, when we come to the economy, the, the economy will remain where it is until we find, until we realize that agriculture is the, is the, the fulcrum. The bedrock of our economy should be agriculture. And there is so much opportunity in Agoa, in other trade forums and, and treaties. There are a lot of opportunities for Liberia to take advantage of. Is if, if Agricoles and Ghana can run successful agronomies, the opportunity lies with us to, to do it. Investment in fisheries investment in 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 uh piggery now chicken feed is expensive so let's just look at things that we can source feed for right in the environment uh goats cow sheep these things have been negligible since the war we need to reinvest into those things and you say how look let me tell you something what i realized whether you say a rest or arrow or double arrow whatever if you sit with the Liberian people and you talk to them about the need, because most of them have already gone back home. The older people are going back home. If you sit with them and tell them about the need of maximizing the potential they, they yield on their lands and how they can really, really commercialize their effort instead of just it becoming, you know, negligible or if I grow more than what I eat, I can sell a little and make a little money, we will drive our economy forward. All our neighbors, Sierra Leone has what they call the agriculture, I mean, the cassava initiative. And if you buy, most times in Liberia, I always tell people, if you go to Bo Water Side, you see the trucks coming across the border with heaps of gari from Sierra Leone. We buy our, our gari from Sierra Leone because somebody there thought about the former president, Kaba, thought about the agriculture initiative and they implemented it, and they are getting foreign exchange. We go to Sierra Leone with US dollar to buy Gary to bring to Liberia. What we are saying here is nothing so big. They are all approaches that can be accomplished with, with when you have it, it flows down from the leader. The last thing I would say, the issue of corruption. When you when the president is asking people, Dennis, to pass vouchers at the Ministry of Finance that with for money that is not his, he already have injected corruption into the whole government. Everybody will do it. Because you're asking people to pass virtue to give you money that, that is not yours. But when you when the president say, hey, we are going to treat impunity as an anathema, an outcast in our society. And we're going to say from, go, from here going forward that we will audit people and we'll find those who are found uh, wanting will be held accountable by the law. Corruption will find its place in Liberia. It will leave us. But Thank the thing you. about it is that we feed into these narratives because people say, oh, it was promised before. Yes. But the person who sits at the top, did they ask people to pass vouchers? Did they ask people to make payments and take and, and balloon payments that were supposed to be low and put more money out of it? These are the things we're talking about. Common sense approach to governance. Thank you. Mohammed. Uh, yeah, so, you know, I, I have to uh, interject two things. Um, I want to make sure that, um, you know, when I communicate information, um, I know I'm right because, you know, one, I've either read it or, you know, I've heard it from the source of that info. Uh, I mentioned on our last show that, you know, Bacchus Matthews led the Midnight March in 1980 and someone said oh you don't know anything about that you don't know anything about that girl that's not true because matthew didn't do that okay on april 14 of 2004 Bacchus matthews wrote that he led 500 people to the executive mansion purportedly to protect the executive mansion even though the president was in butuo Nima county so it's written. The thing about like uh, you know us, uh, thing about Liberians is that if you want to hide something, this is what I heard. This is not my own. Word. These are not my own words. If you want to hide anything from Liberians, just write it. You know, 
you know, they're not going to see it. So let me move on. So this is, you know, this, this has been a, a very, uh, for sure, interesting, you know, discussion. Uh, I, I, I like it. Uh, and so, you know, I want to thank my uh, co-panelists. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's been interesting. Um, you know, hopefully uh, our viewers also, you know, at the end of it, uh, took something away from this. Uh, this is very important uh, for Liberia, not just for us, for Liberia as a whole. Finally, uh, again, I go back to something I said. It is incorrect to state here that Liberia does not have enough arable land uh, throughout the country. Again, you know, I don't, I, I didn't just read this. I lived a life, Dennis. Uh, I lived with my uncle who was a trader. He was a farmer. Planted rice, beans, cassava, yeah, you name it, everything under the sun. So there's enough land in Calipo right now. There's enough land to feed the whole River G County. There, good land. There's enough land in Grand Gita around Zwedru to feed the entire Grand Gita and export some. It was happening. It was happening. Why is it not happening now? It's leadership and vision. We have to have that leadership that will go back to what things were and even more. So, you know, that's that's what I have to say. Dennis? Thank, thank Can I ask you. a question, Dennis? I want to ask, uh, you know, I know we're making final statement. Did I say anywhere in my in my, in my my discourse that we don't have enough arable land in Liberia? Mohammed, is that what you, you think I, I said? Didn't, I didn't hear that either. I'm not, not, no, because when you say this and people listen, they say, oh, these guys from Baka Camp King, they say, we don't have enough arable land in Liberia. Is that, you, is that what you heard me say? I'm just, no, this is, without forcing, I'm just asking an honest question. Mommy, can you respond, please? Let, let me go to uh, let me go to call for closing comments. Mohammed has. Uh, and before call, before you come in, I uh, want to. Uh, yes, you want me to respond to this? Yeah, no. Go ahead, you, Muhammad, if you want to respond, maybe please. that what you heard me saying. Yes, it is my understanding you're saying that you know there's Liberia, and you said this. I think we have to go back to the tape. If you're denying it now. Uh, you know, you, you somewhere in your in your expose, uh, you mentioned that there is not in, in enough land, you know, to to you know, the, most of the land are owned by you know in, individuals, so it's hard to attain those lands. You also said that people are transforming these lands now into cash crops and all that, even with the cash crops, there is enough, enough land. Okay, Mohamed, Dennis, please, uh, I beg you, so, just 50 seconds. Dennis, Mohamed. I, I need to, I, I have other businesses, you know. Yeah, uh, Mohamed, let me, you already, let me just, hold, let me hold, just on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Tule. Hold on, Tule. Let, let's, let's, let's make progress here. So before I bring call in, let me advertise what's, what's coming. Uh, tomorrow at 6, we're going to have the literary hour with uh, Professor K. Moses Namwe and uh, Jackie Sire, you want to tune in. Then Friday night, we're going to have the Friday night debate. Friday night debate, we're going to be discussing the AFL Chief of Staff revelation. We want to be also talking about Mr. Cummings and the global people. What's going on in Claraton? VP Joseph Yuman Buaka flies private jet. Louis Brown and the retired sovereign rally. And last but not the least, the LPP is also having a rally on December 14. So we're going to be talking about this on Debate Night Friday. Saturday morning, uh, Mr. Louis Garcia Brown will be here to discuss the December 17th Retired Suffering Peaceful Rally. You don't want to miss that. Also, uh, Sunday morning, we're going to have a debate. Mr. Isiaka Sheriff of the CDC and George Preston Lobo of the United Party will be here to discuss the visions of their standard bearers, their records, and leadership when it comes to Liberia. Who has better leadership? You don't want to miss that debate. Also on Sunday, on the noon day, we will have an exclusive interview with Madam Mandela Cooper. She's going to be talking about women participation in politics. Your host, 
Priscilla Inanto will be here with the new day. Call your closing comments. Right, yeah. No nation has ever succeeded in moving most of its population out of poverty without most of that population leaving agricultural work. So I'm saying this to say that this idea of having these little small cooperative farms is a recipe for continued and sustained poverty. Governance is not about common sense. It's about being informed, being technically inclined, being educated. These are very complex issues. If common sense could solve poverty, we would not be poor. Um, industrialized food systems, that's what feeds human beings. And maybe that is not common sense, but industrialized food production is what lifts countries out of poverty and has enough to create a situation of food security and food independence. So you're not depending on your international partners to ship food that their countries are producing. So in order for us to advance ourselves to a modern state where we have a, a technically inclined population trained to solve our problems, we must take people off the farms mechanize those farms so that their the production is more efficient and more environmentally friendly better controls better science those are the things that feed people and that's what i wanted to say i mean this this idea of you know having everybody growing little food crops here and bringing together this this ancient cooperative farming when we have an actual apocalypse we can revert to that but right now informed policy people, informed agriculturalists, informed educated scientists in making policy decisions or informing policy decisions. Thank you. I want to reiterate uh, women political participation. That's what Madame Mandela Cooper will be speaking of all the noon day. That's Sunday at 12 noon, right here on Focus on Liberia. Mr. Larama Yonton, you have the last word. Oh, thank you, Janice. I think it's been a wonderful show. Um, part of the reason why we hear is that the last five years has been rocky. Um, we are in his team of collaborators have pushed the country backward. Um, we continue to see a complete erosion of our governance space. And the president himself is at it's my just the best in terms of incompetence. And we don't want to talk about corruption because we know that um, it's walking in broad daylight on Broad Street. We want to change the situation of Liberians. Um, we present to the Liberian people a vision that is captured in agricultural rules, education, sanitation, and, and tourism much more to address our economic problems. When we have about 87% of all Liberians working in the formal sector, we have to make a massive migration of people who work in the formal sector to the formal sector. And that happens when we are able to expand the economy and create a lot of private sector spaces for job creation for our people. Agriculture becomes the single most in, important industry that helped to drive our country. We look forward to a day where we are increasing our national, this, this share of our national, the share of our national GDP as it relates to agriculture in terms of productivity and output. We look forward to a day where we can increase the size of our small farming holders. Um, at currently there are about 35,000 across the country, but we want more people to to move into into agriculture to move into um into farming activities backed by government subsidies program to ensure that they have the kind of security and access to to capital to 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 to, to, to move from subsistence to mass based um production farming we also want to invest in education when government is not even meeting up to its own demand in terms of the investment 
um, is a question. When we have government only paying half of um, the 25,000 teachers that are listed on the payroll, we have to ensure that our teachers are not only paid, but also we have qualified teachers all across our classroom. We have the issue of textbook supply of a lot of shortages all across schools. The ratio is six to one. We have to ensure that our people have the basic things they need, <coughs> qualify them to be competitive all, at all levels um, of our educational sojourn. This is what we bring to Liberia, a vision that transform, a vision that is able to move Liberia, not only in a fundamentally new direction, but create an environment where we can prosper as a people. Thank you so much, Mr. Yonta. I want to thank everyone for coming. Always focus on Liberia, where we educate and elevate all things Liberia. I want to thank our viewers for being here, and even those who will watch later, support us, man. We are trying to do our best. Thank you all for your time tonight, and thank you for always talking tough. Until then, we're going to end with our song that says, we are all Liberians. Whether you believe or JNB is the best, has the best plan for Liberia, or you believe it's Cummins, it's Gonglo, or we are, we are all Liberians, and it is incumbent upon all of us to do our utmost best to make our country the glorious land of liberty. Have a good night, and God bless you. We are Liberians. Liberia is our home. Liberia people. Ah! Uh -huh.